Good evening. This is Eugene Chen on Straight Talk. Our guest this evening is Dr. Kennedy Wong, Hong Kong Deputy to the National People's Congress. Dr. Wong is also a member of both the Legislative Council and the Election Committee. He is a lawyer by profession and is the president of the China Law Society's Hong Kong Council Members Association. This evening, we are going to talk about the implications of the two sessions in Beijing for Hong Kong people. Welcome, Kennedy. Thank you, Eugene. Kennedy, um, we must congratulate you on your successful recent election to be the Hong Kong deputy of the National People's Congress. Yes, thank and you. And I believe you have also just returned from Beijing attending the two sessions. And this must be your fifth time attending the two sessions, previously as a CPPCC member, and but the first time as the MPC dep deputy yes, this indeed, time. Indeed. Yeah, I hesitated because not very often uh, people of your age have already been there for 20 years. So um, it has been a great achievement. So how is it different that you're attending as a deputy of the MPC as compared to a CPPCC member? Thank you, Eugene. I think um, under our Chinese constitution, the NPC, which is our National People's Congress, has the power to legislate, has the power to elect uh, very senior uh, state officials, and uh, we have actually also power to make proposals uh, to uh, ministries. So, um, and also, uh, you know, there are more NPC members than CPPCC members. Uh, as far as I remember, there are 2977 NPC delegates. Right, close to 3,000. Yeah, right? and then for CPPCC members, there are about uh, 2,200. Right. Uh, Hong Kong SAR. Uh, has uh, 36 delegates mm -hmm. uh, to the National People's Congress. Mm -hmm. And I am one of them. Uh, I'm very honored. Uh, also understand that there's a lot of hard work. Uh, and uh, throughout my 10 days in Beijing for the NPC, actually we uh, worked uh, day and night, I right. assure you. Also, there's no weekend, no break. Right, and uh, attendance rate actually has been very high. Mm -hmm. you know, for everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember one statistics uh, of 2977 delegates uh, when, you know, it came to sort of voting uh, for our president, say, you know, 2952 delegates voted. Oh, very so, high election yeah, rate. Yeah, it's a very high uh, attendance rate as well as very high uh, rate of um, uh, election, you know, for uh, such a senior body in China. Right, uh, Kennedy, you were there to, for the previous term, especially when COVID was around. I mean, um, how, how is it different this time? I mean, you, you told me that you still have to attend the CPPCC meeting in the last, last term in Beijing, but um, you, have, you have to be attending earlier, to be isolated and, and test every day. And is the same practice still uh, pursued in this session? Well, this time, um, you know, for the safety of everybody, uh, we uh, had uh, PCR tests uh, almost on a daily basis. Uh, and I think, fortunately, uh, as far as I understand, uh, no delegate from Hong Kong uh, caught COVID mm -hmm. or actually influenza, etc. And uh, that is why uh, I think for the safety of all the delegates and to ensure that you know, the two sessions run smoothly, uh, I, I would say that the uh, um, mm, PCR tests on a daily basis uh, was necessary. Right. Do you still have to wear a mask during meetings? Uh, well, I think you probably have seen some extracts uh, on TV. Uh, the delegates, uh, we had to wear a mask uh, during, uh, you know, the, the full session. But, uh, you know, for the, the small group uh, sessions, uh, so um, there, there was a bit of a leeway. Right. Yeah, I see. Um, I mean, since you mentioned television, we we can, as a viewers from Hong Kong, we only watch what's happening on the television and all those images. Um, what actually happens during the the ten days you mentioned in, in in Beijing? I mean, you can't possibly be at the hall for ten days. Can you uh, get, get some behind the scenes shots for the viewers? What exactly do you do? What time do you start? And, and where do you eat? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Yeah. Um, normally, uh, our day starts at nine a.m. And, uh, you know, the morning session would end uh, by 11.30. The afternoon session would start at 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. and ends before 5.30. Um, as far as I remember, uh, throughout those 10 days, uh, we went to the Great Hall of the People about five times. Mm -hmm. uh, three times uh, would be for election. 
um, you know, of uh, various senior officials, including our president, uh, vice president, premier, vice premier, uh, ministers, uh, and also uh, People's Bank of China's uh, head and so on. So what, what are the, do you still have to work at uh, your, 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 yes. your extended lunch time and after work? Do you have anything in particular to do? Well, actually, there's a lot of reading to do, Eugene, because um, um, we were given a lot of papers. For example, the government work report mm -hmm. and also the, um, all the um, uh, figures, um, all the um, income and expenditure of our government for the past year and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of reading. Mm -hmm. um, and also uh, those documents, uh, you, know, mm, you know, cannot be sort of taken out right. of our sort of compound. Um, so basically, uh, it, it's a lot of reading, and then uh, we need to also uh, form uh, subgroups. You know, the Hong Kong uh, delegation, we only uh, have 36 delegates, so we are a subgroup ourselves. And almost every day, uh, we have together to discuss. And uh, for some of these subgroup meetings, uh, we have uh, ministers. Right. Uh, we have. Um, representatives from different ministries and commissions also attending. So they will listen to our view. And actually one area that I find, uh, you know, NPC is really quite different from CPPCC is really the speed of response right. from these ministries. Um, before, you know, NPC sort of closes, I already received three written responses, you know, from the PBOC, the People's Bank of China, from um, our Supreme Court and also right. the State Prosecutor, you know, all on my uh, proposals and suggestions and on my comments during these subgroup meetings. So they are very responsive. Right, which is very different to what your past experiences are. Uh, normally, uh, for CPPCC uh, motions, we would of course get a reply, but that would be probably some months later. Right. Um, Another rumor that we sort of read in the newspaper that all the deputies are confined to the hotel for the 10 days. I mean, is that true? It, it's a kind of closed loop um, <clears throat> arrangement. So um, it, it's true that we uh, were advised not to go out. Is it, but, uh, is it more it's, for the it's, purpose for the, the COVID measure or more or less? I think they want it's you to both be? for COVID and because uh, Beijing uh, during those days uh, also had uh, influenza A you know, spreading quite rapidly. Mm -hmm. So we all agreed that we should uh, concentrate. Right. Uh, you have already mentioned some of the, the roles and, and, and jobs that the MPC will do. I mean, you're also being a legislator in the Hong Kong Legislative Council. They're, they're uh, both sort of law um, um, and forming parties. I mean, how do you compare the Legislative Council to MPC? Of course, I mean, they are of different level, but of course, in terms of work-wise, how would you compare them? Well, I think one term of the NPC uh, lasts for five years. In Hong Kong, uh, our legislative council, um, you know, runs for four years, and then we have to run for re-election. And um, for NPC, because we look at the whole country, 1.4 billion people, so I think uh, perspective is a lot wider. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, we um, we need to think from a, a lot more different angle. Uh, really, we we have briefing on the, what, what's happening globally and also domestically. Mm -hmm. So we get to read a lot of papers and then I would say that it has really deepened mm -hmm. my understanding of the whole country. Right, Kennedy, you also mentioned earlier that we have 36 deputies and I know out of the 36, we have 12 of them are actually legislative councillors. Yes. So do you see them there, I mean, there, will the interests be aligned or will they be compatible? Well, I think so because uh, these days already um, there's a consensus that uh, MPC and CPPCC uh, sessions, uh, when we are ongoing for the two weeks, then you know there, there will be no uh, uh, council meeting of right. uh, our legislature here in Hong Kong, but there there would probably be some uh, panel meetings. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I think uh, it's quite important for Hong Kong, uh, including Hong Kong legislators, to understand what's happening you know, in the whole of China, mm -hmm. you know, so, um, you know, Hong Kong uh, really depends very much on how well the whole country does. Right. If uh, China develops well, Hong Kong uh, will certainly benefit. So I think uh, the economic integration uh, is undergoing 
and also the GBA presents a lot of opportunities for Hong Kong. All right, Kennedy, you all, when you become a, a deputy to the MPC, I mean, you have to run through an election and you do have your election pledges. I'm going to ask you in public, how are you going to fulfill your pledges to your constituents? Well, I think uh, I listed out four main areas. Which one is uh, national security. I think uh, that has been uh, handled quite well by our current administration. And then the second area is uh, how um, much more Hong Kong can do to help with uh, peaceful uh, unification with uh, Taiwan. Mm -hmm. And also the third area is, uh, you know, the rule of law, uh, because I, I, I'm a lawyer myself. And then the fourth area is, uh, you know, digital economy. You know, how well Hong Kong can further sort of integrate with, uh, say, digital China. I think uh, both in Legislative Council here in Hong Kong and also when I was in Beijing, I've been pushing, you know, uh, on all fronts. So I think, uh, you know, I, I am gradually, gradually uh, moving towards uh, uh, f fulfilling, <laughs> you right. know, my election promises, but I have five years to go. Right. So you, you can tell me how well I've done. Yeah, we will that. certainly be having a check on you. So let's go to a break now and we will do stay with us. We will be right back. Welcome back. We have been talking with Dr. Kennedy Wong and his personal experience at the recent two sessions in Beijing. Now that we know a little bit more about how it works, let's go on and talk about the key points that were decided on and their effect on Hong Kong people. So Kennedy, in the first half, thank you for giving us a sort of a glimpse of what's behind the scene, that you guys have to work very hard for the 10 days and you're basically confined to the hotel and doing a lot of homework for Hong Kong and for the, for the country as well. One, one point that we often read in the newspapers, especially from the Western media, is that we call them critics, say that the MPC is just a rubber stamp organization, that it has no real debate on policy and legislations. And now you've actually been attended as a deputy. How will you rebut them? Well, I think, first of all, in the election process, um, you know, no one has uh, asked us to vote for uh, whoever. So it's entirely our own free will and it's a uh, secret. Mm -hmm. So basically we can fill our ballot, you know, in a certain sort of booth. And also, um, you know, I think I, I've just told you, uh, during our group discussions, many um, representatives uh, from different ministries uh, attended and actually they took our view and proposals very seriously mm -hmm. and they actually responded very promptly. So um, I think you know, under our Chinese constitution, uh, the NPC has power to supervise you know, uh, state uh, organs. Also, you know, we have the power to elect and decide on the, the state's uh, senior officials, and we have the power to legislate. So these are all clearly stated out in the Chinese constitution. Mm -hmm. So that's my answer. Right. So Kennedy, earlier in the first part of the show, you mentioned there are 2,977 deputies to the MPC, uh, uh, far more than the CPPCC, and we have 36 delegates from Hong Kong. Um, that represents us have worked out just over 1%. So how much can the Hong Kong knowledge or expertise being able to contribute to the national development and vice versa? How much are we being treasured to, from your point of view? Well, I think, uh, you know, uh, since um, our return to the motherland, Hong Kong has always had uh, 36 delegates. And I would say that uh, um, you know, as a percentage of our, our population, you know, we... Um, you know, we are sort of overrepresented mm -hmm. in NPC because uh, uh, there are 1.4 billion uh, Chinese and uh, only just less, slightly less than 3,000 delegates. So about uh, 450,000 mm -hmm. uh, on average in the mainland uh, uh, people would elect one NPC deputy. So, you know, for Hong Kong, the uh, uh, percentage is higher. So it actually shows that uh, our state... Uh, uh, values Hong Kong very much. Mm -hmm. And I think um, many of our fellow Hong Kong deputies to the NPC, they are from business, professional and various backgrounds. They understand Hong Kong and uh, 
uh, we, you know, we have all worked very hard, and I think on average we have submitted five proposals each, you know, to ministries at the highest level. So far, the responses are very positive, and uh, quite a number of our uh, proposals have been accepted. Uh, in particular, you know, I, you know, submitted four proposals myself. Mm -hmm. uh, three are, uh, you know, related to um, how better Hong Kong can integrate into the GBA, Greater Bay Area. Uh, so I think they have been uh, quite seriously looked at. Mm -hmm. So Kennedy, let's move on to what actually that was discussed and direction that was sort of confirmed in these two sessions. I, we, I read that there was a reform of, of the state government. Yes. Which you can tell us about, about that. And also there was the important election of presidency as his third term of his president and also other positions as well. So our nation has gone, undergone very challenging times both internationally and also domestically. So can you tell, summarize what the MPC has achieved over the last 12 months and what are your views of MPC going ahead? I think uh, during the two sessions, um, I think uh, the most important, mm. I would say, work that the MPC has uh, completed, of course, is uh, you know, electing uh, the next term of government, including our next uh, uh, president, uh, uh, vice president, uh, chairman of the Central Military Commission, etc. Um, but I think you also mentioned that uh, we also approved uh, the State Council's uh, reform. Um, the reform covered a number of important areas. I remember that it covers uh, technology, it covers uh, intellectual property rights, you know, it covers uh, uh, the uh, creation of a bureau on big data, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it also um, has created uh, a bureau uh, to look after the, the elderly. Mm -hmm. So I think um, these are all very important areas uh, that our uh, uh, central government uh, considers uh, really important for the next term of gov government. And uh, I miss one important area, which is the uh, uh, creation of a sort of wider financial regulatory uh, commission you know so and also has expanded the china securities regulatory commission so that it also covers the issuance of bonds mm -hmm. um, i think um, you know when our country develops uh, technology is very important and in order for the technology sector to uh, to sort of move forward protecting intellectual property rights is very, very important and then financial risk as we can see it's, uh, you know, globally, it's a major risk that every government is facing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, strengthening financial control at the highest level. And then, you know, in order to develop our country's digital economy, and which I think Hong Kong should really ride on, on this uh, high-speed rail, is the creation of this big data bureau. Mm -hmm. So I think big data is a huge piece of asset, you know, that our government as well as business sector should really more utilize. Right. Um, Kenny, thank you for just giving a very quick outline of what happened in the last 10 days of uh, solid meetings in Beijing. And one comment I picked up was the presidency said that the Hong Kong's prosperity is inseparable from our country's national development. That can only be a good thing for Hong Kong, isn't it? Yes, I think so. <clears throat> I think, uh, you know, uh, in the Premier's uh, government work report, as well as um, you know many sort of ministers' uh, uh, kind of speeches here and there, uh, everybody uh, regarded Hong Kong as a very important SAR of the whole country. Mm -hmm. I think, in particular, one country, two systems, you know, has to advance further, and Hong Kong has to maintain our uniqueness, you know, as a very international city. Mm. in the whole of China. So I think uh, in order for Hong Kong to uh, prosper, I think we need to understand our state policy, we need to integrate economically, and uh, um, you know, we also need to utilize mm -hmm. you know, the two systems advantage. 
McKinley, this, the, I'm going to ask you even more direct questions relating for our viewers in Hong Kong. I mean, you just said earlier there was a restructuring of the, the China State Council that was approved, and there was also including a, an establishment of a dedicated bodies uh, under the Party Central Committee to oversee the affairs of Hong Kong and Macau, and that that means the Hong Kong Macau Affairs Office now report directly to the central leadership. Could this affect people's perception? The high degree of autonomy that we have in your view? Well, I think uh, under the Chinese constitution, Hong Kong is a special administrative region. And we understand that, um, you know, the central government would love Hong Kong to maintain its one country, two system status. So I think, uh, you know, Beijing loves Hong Kong. And, you know, that's my conclusion. So I think whatever the central government does, I think we also need to look at it from the whole country's point of view. But I think Hong Kong, you know, we will be able to maintain our status as an international financial center mm -hmm. because we are already an international financial center and we have a common law legal system. And then we are going to serve not just the whole of China, but the world. Right. So I think that is uh, one of the, uh, our strengths. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, if we need to, uh, you know, uh, be more creative and then advance uh, on various technology front, we need to work more hand-in-hand -hand mm -hmm. with, say, Shenzhen right. and, and other parts of the Greater Bay Area. So. Well, Kennedy, with this now directly under the Central Party leadership, yeah. I mean, even CE said that this has paved the way for better collaboration. I so has, have we had a problem in the past? That's the reason why we do well, it now. Well, I think uh, there, there are still many areas that would require G to G sort of meetings mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and also dialogue. Sort of G to G meaning not just the central government, but provincial governments. Mm -hmm. So I think the, our chief executive and his ministers have set a very good example. You know, they spent more time in Beijing and they met with uh, ministries. I think uh, in future, you know, Hong Kong uh, would need, you know, to understand what our neighbors, our mm -hmm. neighboring provinces, what they are actually doing, and also what our central government would like our country to advance, and then grasp the opportunities they're in. Uh, I think, uh, you know, um, Beijing wants us to be successful, but we also need to understand right. where we're heading. A quick answer for you. Um, you know, with growing the uh, um, geolo geopolitical stress of the West and the mainland, Hong Kong being, what being having one country, two systems, do you think we'll ride through the storm? Yes, I, I believe so. I mean, Hong Kong is as open as before. You know, we still okay. have uh, uh, the common law legal system. We are mm -hmm. protecting everybody's investments here. Right. And we also welcome uh, all uh, people from right. all over the world to come in work here and play here. Right, we'd like to thank um, uh, Kennedy for sharing his experience at the National People's Congress. As he, Mr. John Lee has said, we need to pay more attention to the two sessions as many opportunities have been created on the mainland that Hong Kong people and businesses can take advantage of. Have a good week and good night.